Welcome to Dark Tower Month for a comic a day. We're about halfway through this run of videos, so by now, if you don't know, I'm going to be featuring my partner in crime, Criff. Hello. From the Bard and Criff vlog. Format is just a bit looser with analysis through the recappy bits. So massive spoilers are massive for everything Dark Tower this month. You've been warned. So now we're starting up Treachery, a plot that I'm fairly certain was made for the adaptation. But I could easily be wrong. No, this is all just created for the comics. So we open on a beautiful day in Gilead, with Elaine and Cuthbert being sworn in as official gunslingers. I mean, did you even see the last videos? They earned it. They did, but they never proved themselves against Court. And because they never battled Court, there are some other young guns that think that they were just handed their guns because they were friends with Roland. And they ain't too keen on that. I mean, to be fair, they, they did prove themselves, but not through standards and practices. And they're actually so miffed about this, they start a fight with the two and calling them cheaters and whatnot. But Roland is nowhere to be seen to help. He is still in his room, peering into the grapefruit. Yet, Roland can always forever justify that his father couldn't handle the grapefruit. It would overwhelm him, so he needs to keep it hidden and bear it all for his father's sake. Which would have been a more powerful scene had they gone further into Rhea's, you know, actually being absorbed by it and her feeling the same way that she couldn't give it back to the Coffin Hunters, that she had to have it for herself. That's actually a very good thing to bring up because, like, I realize that Treachery and maybe even Long Road Home works better if you have read Wizards and Glass. Or, you know that story and how that laid out? Because, like with Roland here, like what you just said, yeah. if they went into the same absorption that the book went into for Gunslinger Born, the comic, then you would understand it a lot better right but then we would have dragged down what is by far the worst of the three that we've made it into so far so far <laughs> speaking of roland's father steven and elaine and bert's fathers are also with him plus several others are going on a mission to thwart goodman farson is he jewish now <laughs> fine good man farson thank you their big mission is to stop a squad of Farson's men, and they do. Yet the betrayal is on our gunslinger's fathers, as one of the men, one of Farson's men, has a grenade, and feigning mercy crawls to the feet of Stephen of the line of Eld and pulls the pin. I can understand, but not at the same time, because gunslingers don't show mercy, but they will never do something unhonorable, like shoot a man crying for mercy or shoot someone in the back. Yeah, that's why it's understandable, but at the same time, they also did kind of just ambush, so it was, a uh... Right, right. Like, their, their mission was eradicate. It was wipe them all out. It wasn't show mercy. Right. Which, it... the cold, as Roland calls it, the red haze would have taken over, and... There wouldn't have been time for the dude to crawl over and just be all, Gotcha, sucker! Well, to be fair, every gunfight lasts five minutes, no matter how long it takes. And I know I said this at the start of the last miniseries, but I think this issue worked really well. I think it's possibly the best foot forward we've seen so far. I mean, with the gunslinger born, it was all set up. In fact, the entire seven issues felt like set up. It did, because it came from, again, the heart. And I know we harp on it a lot both Wizard and Glass and Gunslinger Born, but they were almost the same read. It's such a hard and slow and trudging read. Like for Long Road Home, I flew through that in like an hour. Like I couldn't put yeah, it down. Yeah, you, you were here reading it. And... Like I couldn't put it down. Treachery I started getting the same way with. The only reason I put it down is because I started falling asleep and hitting my computer. <laughs> Like, that's the only reason I was like, okay, I need to call it a day. But uh, the reason I say, because The Long Road Home was definitely a sequel series to The Gunslinger Born. It was just bridging us from there to Treachery, where we start the fall of Gilead. Yeah, like, but I think part of my reason is because I went into it with the preconceived notion of what The Gunslinger Born was going to be. Right. Because I made it through Wizard and Glass. The now, Lord have mercy on you. For you who didn't actually read through Wizard and Glass. Just listen through the audio book right. on it. Gunslinger Born was probably an easier read for you. Yeah, I think that could actually, because I did praise Gunslinger Born right, initially, right. but now that, because I read that, I remembered the story for Wizards and Glass, liked it, and then I listened to the audiobook where I actually stopped listening to the audios because there's only so many times I can hear Cuthbert. Oh, Cuthbert. And that's nothing against the audio. Re the guy who read it, I thought, sounded great doing it. And yeah, it was all a the great... other ones were amazing. It's just... Cuthbert. There are certain things that once you read, if it's not a commonly used word, you have a preconceived notion in your head. Right. 
how it should sound just by reading it. So hearing it differently, like I'm pretty sure you said Meiji different than how I pronounce it. And that would have started a grade on me because of the amount of times it's put out there. Anyways, we're going to move on because so I think this was the best foot forward, especially coming out because it does start really focusing on Gilead's society. Yeah, it starts focusing on their customs and how they handle themselves and things like that. And it, it's a great setup issue. It really is. Like, it starts a bunch of stories and just gets you ready for what's coming. Right. Like, we don't know the outcome of the fight with Cuthbert and Elaine and the gunslingers in training. We don't know what happens after that blows up. We don't know where Roland's going to go from sitting in the... Come back tomorrow. Let's see what happens when Roland's world is on the line. Dun, dun, dun. See you later. 